when you've uh, when you've got Bryce and Kyle in the game at the same time, what goes into the dynamic of which one brings the ball up the court or initiates the offense? Uh, either one, because uh, either one of them can play the point. Obviously, Kyle can play the four and Bryce can't. But a lot of times we'll put Bryce you know, sometimes in an off guard spot with Zach. Uh, and a lot of times we have four guards in uh, at that time, so we got multiple guys that can bring the ball up, and we're going to need that against uh, an Oregon team that likes to pressure. Tried getting into us a little bit up in uh, Eugene, so we're expecting a little bit of the same. So um, stuff we've been working on, but I, I think we've got a lot of good ball handling guards. But when both of them are in the same game and at the same time, uh, we've got a lot of versatility on who can bring the ball up. After road losses, you guys have been able to come back and respond with you know big wins at home. Is that mostly a comfort thing, or what do you think is the reason for that? No, I give the players credit um, because I, I've been there before. That's not easy when you lose and you get knocked down learning to win again. That's not just an automatic whether you're playing at home or you got to go play on the road. And they've been able to do it twofold. We've lost and had to go to USC and win. That was a road game. Uh, we've lost uh, the second game of some two-game road trips that we've had to come back at home and win. So the guys have proven that they they can stay away from losing streaks and they've got it here it is they're in that situation again and so if we go by past experiences they've done a very good job but it's about continuing to prove yourself and we're getting a very good very hungry Oregon team that's coming in here and we had a great game with them up in Eugene and we're fortunate to get away with the two-point win up there and uh, I think this one's going to have um, a lot of the same to it I think they know they're playing for a lot we're playing for a lot so it makes for a late February a great game. 35% of your opponent's points come from the three-point line. I think that's like seventh most in the nation. Why do you think that is? Is there, have, and how have you felt about your three-point defense? This uh, year? I don't know. There's been a lot of, about our defense, and you bring up stats. I think we're one of only four or five teams that defensive and offensive efficiencies in the top 25. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and I've, I've hammered our defense a lot, but I think four out of the last five games, we weren't very good defensively at Stanford, but after watching the tape, they made a lot of shots. Um, you know, I guess I, I like our position regardless of what percentage of we're giving up uh, percentage of three-point shots. I like overall defensively, um, other than Stanford, we've shown a lot of improvement. And to be one of only four or five teams in the country where you're ranked in the top 25, top 30 in efficiency, both offense and defense, um, this late in the year, that's pretty good. With your, with your rotations at this point in the season, do you feel like they're kind of set with you know having Zach and Bryce come in at that 14-minute uh, mark right around there? Does that feel like it's a set thing, or could you still think about uh, adjusting it? Well, we adjust it, and we adjust it game to game depending on how those starters are flowing. We've had uh, a couple games, uh, trying to think at Cal, uh, we rolled with starters for about eight minutes in the second half. Uh, so it all ma it, it matters about flow. We, we know our players pretty well. We know how many minutes they can go in a row before production and efficiency starts to drop. Uh, and we like the combinations that we like to play. So, um, you know, yeah, there's a set to it, but it's also by f by flow and feel as well. In terms of the three-point attempts, is that maybe uh, an offense or offenses attacking the zone, especially because the they can't three, get inside the necessarily? The three-point attempts that... They, that opponent, your opponents are taking. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, you know, we mix zone and man. We mix some presses, so... You know, it comes down to, you know, do we want teams, to be honest with you, I think we give up too many easy ones. I, I, if, I, if we could make teams shoot more threes and, and take away more of the inside, uh, I'd be much more in favor of that. Uh, just because the percentages uh, are going to go in our favor because the three-point shot, um, you know, free throws you make at a high clip, 70 or better, layups you're probably 80 or better, three-point shots most teams are 40 or less. So um, given my... If I had my ways, I'd just assume teams shoot 30, 35 threes against us. Um, I, I think it helps our rebounding. It helps our ability to get out and run. Uh, but whether we've been in man and zone, and, and really we've played probably, I don't know, over the last six, seven, eight games, we've probably been more 70, 30 man. Whether that stays the, the course, we'll just have to wait and see. But I, I've liked how our rebounding has improved. Um, we just didn't quite do the things that I would have liked to have, have seen at Stanford, but I think they got very, very hot, and we just didn't handle that flow very well. But I don't think it was something where we saw our defense take two or three steps back. I, I think they, they had a lot to do with it, and, and we had some breakdowns as well. With uh, Tony Parker's quality minutes the other night, I mean, how, uh, how key is that for 
going forward to develop that interior presence? Well, it's been real good because obviously Dave and, and Travis uh, give us pick and pop guys, guys that can run the floor, uh, extend defenses. They're almost like big stretch fours. Um, the one, you know, really legit center. Uh, post presence that we have is Tony and I think the last four games he's just been terrific and he's putting in the time uh, he's putting the time in the weight room he's putting the time in the film room he comes in every day looking at more tape um, and, and we see him getting better so uh, we saw that early in the season around or, um, early to mid January and he had a little bit of a dip and, and now he's really uh, becoming consistent with that play and, and I thought the one mistake that was made, we didn't get the ball into him enough in the second half against uh, Stanford because uh, he had a really good game here against Stanford and he was on his way of having a really good game up there as well and we, we just didn't get him the ball enough in the second half and that's something we got to look at because I think he's given us a dimension inside that we haven't had and that's a good thing. Is it a thing where you might want to get him more minutes or is it you want to keep him confident with the minute he's getting right now? Yeah, you know, I think anytime production goes up you want more minutes. Uh, with that said, uh, Dave and Trav's uh, minutes have been going up well too because of their production. You know, Trav is producing in the last four or five games better than he's produced all season long. So uh, there's only an X number amount of minutes. Uh, we like playing Kyle at that, at that forward spot as well. You're looking at player, in my opinion, player of the year in this league. So his minutes aren't going down. So there's only so many minutes. Um, but I do think Tony is playing very well. And if he, if he continues that, I think you'll see him out there a little bit more. Have you seen something click for him in terms of staying out of foul trouble? That's just positioning. Um, you know, he's watching a lot of tape, and, and I think that's a credit to him. He's he really learning. He, he wants to get better, and you know, I think that's a great trait for a player to have. So he's coming in, and he's watching how other centers guard, uh, whether it be him or the people we're getting ready to defend. Um, he does a really good job of doing his film work and prep of how does this big like going left shoulder? Does this big like going right shoulder? Is a certain block that he likes to. Uh, to work on. Is he a back screen guy, a down screen guy, you know, a cross screen guy? He's just doing his homework and because of that I think he's learning uh, and he's been able to stay out of, out of trouble for a couple reasons. One, uh, if guards can keep people in front we're not getting the driven as much. Um, he's not fouling in transition which has been something that's been good uh, and in the post he's just using his strength more versus leaning on people. I think he got in trouble early in the season when he was leaning on people. Zach had that stretch against Stanford where he had, I think it was eight consecutive points. What what did you see from him in that stretch, especially that maybe you hadn't seen? I just thought he was aggressive. I, I thought he was a, he had that aggressive mentality again, and he started taking good shots. Um, and, that, and that's the, I think the, the thing with Zach, and he's constantly learning. He's young, so he's learning uh, what this level is all about. But he's somebody who can create his shot just about at, at any time in the game. But it's about creating a, a high percentage shot. When he shoots high percentage shots, uh, Zach shoots at a very, very high level. Like a lot of players, if all of a sudden your shot selection is a little questionable, then it's questionable whether you make those shots. It's just that's basketball. And I think he's learning, um, one, how good he can be and how it's not easy, but getting his own shot is something he can create. Not a lot of players can do that. And now it's learning, okay, I can create my own shot, but can I create my own shot into a high percentage shot? And I thought he did that against Stanford.